everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am thrilled to be with the filmmakers behind Apocalypse Now. I'm joking, documentary now. Um, I love this show. I'm so happy you guys are in studio, and you guys have like your new episodes premiering at the Toronto International Film Festival. I have to say, I was a little surprised, but at the same time thrilled. Did you have any idea? like How did it come about that you were going to show some episodes here? Why are you surprised? Well, you never, I mean, you, <laughs> no, I, I know because we're not a real, <laughs> no, 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 because it's mostly, it's mostly a film festival and yes. they do select TV. Uh, but what yes. had you, how did it come about? Well, I mean, and Alex can answer this more fully, but we were here in season one um, uh, as well. Not, I don't think we were part of this. Uh, we went, it was a screening, right? It wasn't yeah. but on the, do but part of the documentary program. Um, so that relationship was there, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, friends I, with Tom Powers. I think the, the degree to which we enjoy the fantasy that this these are real documentaries and this is a real show that's been going on for 53 seasons. Um, Tom Powers, who runs the documentary program here at Toronto, is also a friend of the show and he's moderated things for us and just gets the show as well as anybody does. And so it was a conversation with Tom to say, wouldn't it be fun if we just brought our fresh documentary films to the festival as if they were part of the documentary program? And he thought that would sound like a fun idea. It feels absurd though too. Uh, I'm all in on this. Like, I, I love it. I'm just, you, you know what I mean? Anyway, look, yeah. so I, one of the things that I'm consistently blown away on by your series is the fact that, and I said this off camera, is the fact that every episode is essentially a pilot. You are not able to reuse anything. It's all new, everything, including the aesthetic of how you're going to film the episode. It's not, you know, the same camera, choice. like it's all different. So how the F do you pull this off every season with whatever budget you have? Uh, we, I mean, it, it, we, part of it is that Alex and I grew up that way at SNL as well. Um, it, it, we worked in the, the film unit and, and every week, you know, starting on a Wednesday night, um, sometimes involving bread, uh, we, we would make a new film, uh, from start to finish and we'd have one day to figure that out and it would be a different genre, a different aesthetic. So it's definitely that prepared us for it, but, um, no, it's hard. <laughs> it's, uh, we, uh, you know, and, and each season um we've also sort of traveled each season as well so had the experience of kind of introducing a brand new producer and production team to the way we do things um which is what also um i feel like we take it for granted somewhat that we're constantly dancing between styles and, and what have you but you know watching it sink into uh, uh new crews um brings home kind of the, the difficulty of it but I don't know. It's also refreshing and exciting. It's nice that, you know, you spend a few days, you go all in figuring an aesthetic out, you know, really, you, we're sort of living it. And I think part of the way we make it for Alex and I, part of the fun is, you know, like you're sort of mentioning the different aesthetics. We, I feel like we operate a little bit by taking on the character. You, you have to take on a character of the filmmaker that you're referencing or figure one out at least. So you got some rules in place. Um, so we get to live it as well. And then, um, and then, yeah, you, you finish that and you jump onto something completely new. So you don't get time to also overthink anything, which is, a, I think, a, a plus of, of that working that way. One of the things uh, I have to talk about is the music on this series. I, I'm <laughs> there's so many songs and so much music. And uh, I'm just curious, how exactly does it come together? How early are you creating? Um, and I think about like the episode with like Blue Jean Committee, you know, and like just all the stuff that went on with that. Um, I, I'm very, very impressed. I'm just curious if you could talk about it. Um, once we have the idea, that's kind of like a puzzle piece that uh, I love figuring out and that we figure out together. So it's like that one is like 70s uh, smooth rock. Great. And so we all just pitch in and just we want it to sound authentic and not jokey. So that's like the main part of it. Like, how can we make this sound authentic? And same thing with the um, the Talking Heads one. Same same kind of thing. Like, how can we make it sound like not jokey? And once we establish that, then we can, you know, write and record and, and go crazy. Well, specifically on the Talking Heads one, and I could be mistaken, but I believe you filmed that in front of like a thousand actual people. Yes. So what is it like for you? when you're writing the music, knowing you're actually going to perform this, or did you know at the time you were going to perform in front of all these people? We, d we did know because you know that that episode is a concert film. And for me, it was more like, I don't want it to be something where we've got to like fix it later. I want it to sound like a real, cause you can always tell 
but I wanted it to sound like a real live show. So that was just a matter of rehearsal. We just practiced and practiced until we sounded like a band that had been together for decades. That was our, the goal anyway. I mean, it really, it helps us that Fred has such a great, you know, just history of his own in the music world. And he understands what would sound like a real show and what would not. And Fred's own instincts about, no, 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 this will sound fake and this will sound real is what makes those things feel real, really. Obviously, like everyone, I am the biggest fan of Spinal Tap. Um, and how much did you debate doing something Spinal Tap E, or is it such a masterpiece that you can't even f with it? That's a <clears throat> that's a tough one and an easy one because we, there's so much respect for it that that every I think every fake documentary goes and asks the question: Has Spinal Tap already done this? And um, I've written to them about this, by the way. I'm like, I cannot believe 40 years later. In the writer's room, we're like, we can't do that because Spinal Tap did it. And But it's good, though. What makes it easy is it's we we, we can't say, like, no one's going to notice. We can't say, you know, it, it's very much like, no, that is, you know, the Bible of it all. Work around it, skip around it, go the other direction, and, and leave it alone. I was just going to say, there's a little bit of when we're trying to figure out what to do, what episodes to do, um, and you know, when we talk to people who also appreciate the show, there's sometimes a instinct of a suggesting, oh, that, that documentary was funny. You should do that one. Or that documentary, oh, that was so, you know, that had so much comedy and you should, and for us, like what tends to work better is when it's a character-based documentary that's kind of more dramatic. You know, if it's already funny, it's harder to have like, what's our take on something that would be funny on top of something that's already funny. So we tend to, to uh, probably not try to take on a documentary that's already got a bunch of humor in it, you know, because what are our unique original turns on something that they've already done a really good job on? Yeah. I mean, I, I, sorry to continue this, but it's, it's a tone thing I think is the most important thing. And I do think that perhaps an unspoken thing between all of us is the, cause I do find that we all um, tend to back away from anything that feels like a, a um, feels like a joke, <laughs> you yeah. know, that if you can feel it coming or if you feel, you know, like if, if you're signposting it and if it breaks the reality of these characters as documentary, like that's, I feel like that's always the line that we, we really, you know, if we're going to cross it, we'll intentionally go there. But it's, the, I do feel like that's the, the thing that we, maybe we don't all say. And, and I think part of the strength of, uh, you know, of, of Mulaney and Seth and Bill, like everybody that writes on the show is they, they can kind of, you know, we can always push that line, but you know, I think the key of the format and maybe the spinal tap of it all, you know, in terms of influence is like, you, you can never betray the reality of, of, uh, you know, uh, of whatever this world is that we're building. And so, um, again, I don't know what I didn't, I had a reason why that, <laughs> I, I had a reason to start that answer, but, uh, yeah, it's how it relates to spinal tap. I don't know. So you've done, I think in the last, I forget if it was in the first season or not, um, season 50, I'm sorry. Um, if uh, you've done a number of two episode arcs, have you ever thought about doing more than a two episode arc? Have you ever thought about doing, you know what I mean? Like, where is that? How do you decide where, where, you know? We, we have, um, I, I mean, I, I don't know, not, not as a group, maybe as much. There, there's been moments we, I remember season two. No, no, sorry. 51. Oh uh, yeah. 51. Um, no, you're right. Uh, it's season two for me. I came on in season 50. Uh, but, uh, we, we talked about, yeah, maybe doing, you know, cause I, of doing like a serialized story, you know, yeah. I want to, cause obviously Netflix is became, Netflix became this sort of peak documentary venue for bingeable, um, stories. And so I feel like we, there was a moment where we entertained like, Oh, maybe we did yeah a full, just the whole season is just one thing. And then, and then I, I remember I had an academic, uh, a sort of idea of like that we would, they would all be separate documentaries, but they'd all add up to the same story ultimately, you know, like that we'd somehow weave um, the same story through all of them, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> there was a cool idea this season that we couldn't crack that was like two episodes that would be totally unrelated, but then some internet sleuth would make a third documentary that was yeah. drawing the connection between oh, the right. two. Yeah. And it was just like, that's such a funny idea. Maybe we'll tackle that, but. That's that's so just, hard to work. So hard to figure out how you do that. <laughs> so I'm so curious. You, it's been a few years since you made the last season. How much were you in that in those years thinking about ideas? How did you ultimately end up with the seven? I believe it's seven episodes this season. Was six. It six? This, My, yeah. I'm sorry, six that you ended up with. 
Um, like, how does that get figured out? And you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it, uh, a lot of it's practical. We think like, well, this, this we can actually accomplish with the budget, with the location, a little bit of that, but mostly it's, um, something that resonates as being funny. So if it makes us laugh when we're on these conference calls or whatever, that gives it momentum. And then we, we, we keep wanting to work on it. And then the ones that we are, we hit, when we hit a brick wall with something, we're like, we can't figure it out. It just disappears, which hap you know, it's, it, it, ha it happens a bunch. If someone has actually never seen the show, doesn't know anything about it, what is the episode you want them to start with and why? Ah, that's a good question. Wow. It's funny because, you know, people will say, oh, that's my favorite episode or that's my favorite episode. And you can always kind of tell, oh, I say you're, you're a music person and that's, yeah. you love the Blue Jean Committee. Yeah, or, that's how I judge people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, this is just my answer. I do feel like episode one of season 50, something about the feeling going into it seemed like the right intro. And I, I don't know why. You're talking about Sandy Passage? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't yeah. know why. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was like the mood we were in. But it was, it was just like, yeah. 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 That's the one with you and Bill as uh, the sisters. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, mother daughter. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know what it is. Something about it did feel a little bit like, like where it's, you know, a beginning. I don't know why. I think it signals what we... Because that was actually the one that kind of unlocked what the show was going to be. Because we, we didn't really know. I remember we sort of had met for a writer's room, you know, we spent a week. And I remember we were sort of talking around all sorts of ideas. And it wasn't until I think Seth brought up Grey Gardens and, and we started pitching around ideas of it that the notion of actually taking an existing documentary and and basically sort of re uh, remaking it uh, with a twist, that that's where that solidified was on that episode. So yeah, it's a pretty good one. What do you want to tease fans about the upcoming season? I mean, the f first of all, it's we shot the whole thing in the UK. So it's a sort of a, a European take on documentary now. So they're, they're all European films. They're looking at the broader world of documentary filmmakers. You know, previously all of our films were sort of more, you know, North American centric. And this was more looking at Herzog and, Agnes Varda and you know, like the, can I, if you don't mind me interrupting, was the decision to film in the UK during, did you realize early on, like there's a tax incentive, let's write for the UK or it was, we're going to, is this guy's idea? <laughs> that was just selfish. I've never, never <laughs> shot in the UK. I'm from the UK and I've never shot there. So I'm um, sorry for interrupting. No, Reese is Welsh and he wanted to shoot in Wales. Uh, yeah, no, no, actually truthfully. So, and this is the biggest name drop that we'll do, but, um, you know, Kate Blanchett did season two with us. And um, so she actually brought an idea to us, uh, which was um, Three Salons by the Seaside, uh, which is a BBC sort of uh, like a 45 minute documentary um, that she brought to us and, and, you know, said, take a look at this. Um, this could be good. And so, yeah, that was very clearly very regional and very British and, and just felt, you know, and if, if Kate Blanchett brings an episode to you, you sort of feels like you probably should do it. Um, so that was what definitely pointed us in that direction but in terms of doing the whole season there yeah it just i don't know if it, it also felt exciting to me just that it would force us all to think differently um that it would give a different landscape of what we could do and and you know maybe energize the writing and 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 everything and so yeah i don't know and then yeah i got to make we made a couple of episodes in wales uh, which was just the realization of a child's dream <laughs> do you is it one of these things because it's so yeah it's so um, the so the show is so critically success. It's you know it's it's uh, it gets great reviews. Is it one of these things where the network has sort of said like, do you have to ask for the green light each year? Do they've already asked you to do more for later? Like, how does that actually work? It feels a little bit like, <clears throat> guys, when are you coming up with you know new season? We're like we're <laughs> we're getting it together. We're we're really trying. Like okay, because you know we've got a new you know. A new slate we've, we've been up. really lucky. Does, does yeah. that sound right? Like it's kind of it's a little yes. bit like we have a really lucky, fortunate partner in in IFC, and that they've been really patient w with us. They, you know, the 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 offers. I mean, I don't know any shows that get to just kind of we disappear for a few years and then get to go. Oh, you know what? We think we could do another one, and and we can come back and do it. Um. So yeah, it's 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 a combination of of the request being there, but also, um, yeah, I I will to do it, but. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, again, I, I'm I'm amazed that we get to make this show. Well, you get uh, to make it because the show is awesome. Well, very, very kind of you. Yeah, that's very nice. Please, this yeah. is, it's easy to say. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I, I have to wrap with you, but I have to ask you an individual question if you don't mind. I'm a fan of when you do voices. Uh, and um, you've done a lot of voiceover work. And um, I did notice that you are voicing Cranky Kong yeah. in the Super Mario upcoming movie. Yeah. Um, what exactly goes into preparing the voice of Cranky Kong? I think from, from what I remember, I think they were like, they just told me, you can't talk about it yet. So I was like, I think people know about it already. But for some reason, I think it's a, it's very like, they're being very like, we'll let you know. Oh, so they're like, you, can you can't even it. say any. Yeah. And, and not in any harsh tones or like, because uh, it's come up. People wanted to ask about it. And I think it's, it's like, I'm supposed to wait until we're doing. I will not pressure <laughs> you anymore. Yeah. I did not realize I hit the, I finally hit the nerve. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, Cranky it's, Kong was where I couldn't go. Yeah. yeah. That's a, I've that, never seen Fred shut down an interview like it's that. It's so funny because <laughs> it is not in my nature. It probably it's, it'd be easier for me to say, look, this is what I did. But I do remember getting a note of like, not yet. Sure. I'll just say that I uh, also, if people have not seen Big Mouth, uh, perhaps they should. Oh, yeah. To yeah. say it like that. Yeah. Just throwing it. Anyway, listen, I just want to say a sincere, um, Thank you for the hard work you put in to make this show. It is so good. I really hope anyone who's not seen Documentary Now uh, tunes in because it's fucking good. Uh, sorry for the language. And, we appreciate um, it. Thank, and have a great tiff. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks for having us.